everybody's looking back and saying, I, man, I wish I could have been better positioned 10 years ago on a marketplace. And so what sellers are often seeing from the e-commerce side is saying, if I could rewind the clock and get into position on Walmart or on Amazon, I would. Uh, Walmart is that opportunity because Walmart is gaining a lot of ground, gaining a lot of traffic, getting a lot of uh, shoppers, and they've, they've put a lot behind continuing to grow this channel. And so it's the perfect opportunity to do what they wished they had done earlier. Hello, everybody. Welcome to White Label Advice. I am here today. My name is Brig McNeely. I am the VP of Marketing. I am here today with our solution specialist, Philip Baker, and then our esteemed guest, Ryan King with Blue Blue Rise. Welcome. Thank you. Yes. And uh, Blue, Ryan, why don't you talk about Blue Rise? Like, what is it? What do you what do you guys do? How are you related to Walmart? Uh, what is with all that fun stuff? Right. Yeah. So Blue Rise is a full service uh, managed services agency. Um, we work with uh, 3P sellers, you know, seven, eight figure or plus Amazon brands and maybe looking to um, move on to an other marketplaces with Walmart. We service uh, 1P brands as well as brokers, aggregators, others. Uh, basically, we take it from uh, helping set up, guide through setup of listing uh, seller account creation through getting into WFS, listing creation, optimization, ad management, and then general just grunt work of pushing through all the, the system things that uh, might pop up on Walmart. And so we interface with uh, primarily the Walmart marketplace teams. And then we work in concert with other teams as we're servicing the other side uh, with the one piece side as well. That's awesome. Yeah. Ryan, why don't you talk a little bit about your, your history as well? Because Walmart has not been the, the focus for, for your entire career, right? For Blue Rise, this has been kind of a, a newish transition from Amazon. So I think people would be curious to know right. yep. kind of why. Yeah, so uh, for years, um, myself and I, our two business partners, we have uh, we are brand owners ourselves. We, we um, dove into the e-commerce space as private labelers is one of the terms that's often used in the Amazon space, creating and developing on brands and ranking them to the top. So we, we come from that side of things, uh, understanding everything on the, uh, everything from the general picture and the goals to strategies, tactics, those things, uh, Amazon for the past five to eight years, um, combined probably about 14, 15 years of experience on our team, uh, managing private label brands. So what we saw with Walmart is another marketplace that has a lot of similarities, but a lot of differences as well. And so we've, we did the deep dive and Walmart, you know, the buzz out there uh, often it says, you know, Walmart's the Amazon of 2012, 2009, depending on who you ask that year changes. Um, but the reality is everybody's starting to see there's the opportunity here. Um, and so we guide them through that process, leveraging that experience as well as the deep dive knowledge and then partnership with uh, White Spider as well and others uh, use it, utilizing SKU Ninja's tools as well to guide them through successfully launching and optimizing on Walmart. That's really awesome. And I think <laughs> we just had a lead come in um, and we didn't know what to do with it. And now I do. I'm going to send it to over to you. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Like, <laughs> well, great. <laughs> I know. I was this like, oh, off. when you were All telling right. me what you guys did, I'm like, oh, we have we have a lead for you. Um, but okay. back to the marketplace and Walmart mar marketplace. Like, so what are the advantages of Walmart mar marketplace? Like, why, why do um, like why do sellers want to go to Walmart and where do they see the most opportunities? Uh, great question. Um, I think a lot of it has to do with Amazon's basically proved the model out. Uh, and a lot of sellers and brands have seen what can happen with e-commerce as they, they develop that type of marketplace. So with Walmart, everybody's looking back and saying, oh, man, I wish I could have been better positioned 10 years ago on a marketplace. And so what sellers are often seeing from the e-commerce side is saying, if I could rewind the clock and get into position on Walmart or on Amazon, I would. Uh, Walmart is that opportunity because Walmart is gaining a lot of ground, gaining a lot of traffic, getting a lot of uh, shoppers, and they they put a lot behind continuing to grow this channel. And so it's the perfect opportunity to do what they wished they had done earlier. And so it is a different audience in many ways, different, different shoppers, different... Um, um, categories and different ways, but overall shoppers are seeing the opportunity or, or suppliers um, or brand owners, sellers are, are seeing the opportunity to get in now and um, 
everything from you know relatively lower review counts on listings. Um, if they're thinking about building what what they would say in e-commerce space, building a moat around your listing. You know, there's there's types of products they can be selling. There's uh, ways they can differentiate themselves now on the marketplace. There's opportunity to not be competing against somebody that has thirty thousand reviews on a listing, but able to actually show what they've produced, which is usually a great product, and actually get it visible in front of the right shoppers. That's awesome. Yeah. And Philip, I mean, um, you know, what have you seen with Marketplace and how it's been growing? I know that, um, you know, we we started, you know, we really, we, we were, you know, we, we kind of, you know, focused more on like the one, the, the one piece when we first really got into the software business. And, but like when we, we've seen like such opportunities with Marketplace and how have you seen Marketplace grow since we've really started looking into it? Yeah, I think the biggest thing that we've seen is the type of supplier coming over from Amazon right now, the, the supplier that is an expert at everything search and content on Amazon, but it feels like maybe they've hit a little bit of a ceiling and they're looking for that additional uh, opportunity. So they see Walmart Marketplace as, an, in their minds, an easy way to come in and, and extend in their assortment and their portfolio. And they're landing on Walmart Marketplace and discovering how different it is than Amazon. And so for some of them, they're hitting the ground running and they have seen success and there's so much opportunity on Walmart Marketplace. But I think they, they probably thought that Walmart was a little bit more advanced than it was. And so I think they're landing, understanding the opportunity, the potential, but not understanding how to take advantage of it. Just because, and it's not even so much, I think, that, that Walmart Marketplace you know, isn't advanced, it's that it's different. And Walmart is really targeting a different type of content. They're targeting SEO in a different way. They want Google shoppers. They want different types of traffic, and their shoppers are still very different than how people shop on Amazon. And so I think the opportunities there, there's also a lot of confusion there. And so I am mean, even working with Ryan in the past, we've talked a lot about, you know, where are these Amazon suppliers? Where are they kind of coming up short? What are they doing that they thought would work because it worked on Amazon? And again, they hit the ceiling that isn't working on Marketplace. And I think there's a lot of of questions out there about how do we do this successfully. And the good news is, I think one advantage that Walmart Marketplace has today is that Walmart wants to increase the assortment, right? It's, it's a huge target for 2022 and on. And so they're, they're calling these, these suppliers in, they're talking to us, they're saying, how do we increase and double and triple our assortment? But the difficult thing is there's not a clear, you know, steps one through 10 of how to do this and how to do it successfully. So I think the, the opportunity is there, but the action steps of how do we do this and how, how do we do it well is still being formalized. And that's where Blue Rise is an agency coming in, having this vast experience on Amazon, understanding those, those private label, label Amazon sellers and the, uh, just the suppliers that are on there have done a good job of, of understanding, working with us and other partners to understand how do we now do this for Walmart.com and kind of putting together some of that... Uh, that formula to be successful in Walmart, Walmart Marketplace. And I think that's the one thing that's missing right now is that formula mm. um, for, these, for these new suppliers. Nice. All right. And Ryan, so, um, you know, one piece, you know, so if you're, if you're in store, sometimes your buyer doesn't want to put all of your, um, you know, portfolio in the store right, um, right yet. And so they, they, they ask you to start putting your portfolio on Marketplace instead. And, um, you know, so I know one of the first questions that uh, one piece will probably have is, is that even worth it? So what do you think? Right. Well, uh, short answer, yes. Uh, I would say it, it's, it's worth doing um, because the, the reason Walmart's wanting more of that catalog on is uh, they're, they're looking at the data produced. They're looking to, uh, it, it's, a, it's a rising tide that raises all, all ships, so to speak. The more, the more of the catalog that gets onto a Walmart marketplace, the more traffic, more shoppers come, uh, the more exposure to that brand um, they're going to gain if they're optimized well. And then um, the secondary impact is for those merchants or others, they're looking at the data to just prove out, one, does this brand actually present themselves well with quality? Are they able to do those things? And then is there a, a uh, product market fit? Are, are people finding it? And once they find it, are they clicking through? Are they converting well? And they're able to see that data across the country, which then arms uh, that supplier as they prepare for line reviews with that merchant to be able to, to give data or to call attention to the data they might already have before them to say, this is showing well in these areas. And so if they're going to do a test run and, and stores or other things, any bit of that data they can get to continue to augment that conversation is going to be a win. 
Nice. Philip, do you have anything to add? Yeah, I think the only thing I would, I would add to that is this Wild West feeling of Walmart Marketplace. And, and, and Walmart is, is fully behind it for all the reasons that Ryan just talked about, right? Because they want to grow their, their traffic, their assortment. They want to augment and understand what the shoppers are looking for and provide that back to them. But because of that, that Wild West feeling of what do we do and how do we do it, Walmart has done a good job of focusing on content where it can't always focus on every little thing, but it's still pushing these suppliers to have good content. And so I think that's the line. It's we want everyone, but we also want to reward people that have good content. And we're going to build out some ways like content quality scores and style guides. We're going to try to give some direction to suppliers about what that looks like. And so I think th the opportunity there is not only to get on Walmart Marketplace, this, this new opportunity and, and wider assortment, but it's how do, we, how do we get on Walmart Marketplace and how do we do it really well? Yeah. How do we excel? And yeah, so it's, the, is the it difference. like, is it taking over? So basically, you know, is putting your items on Marketplace, is that kind of like your first test store? Is it kind of like, you know, kind of being like, it's not replacing the test store, but it's just kind of like your first step? Or is it, is it just kind of... It, it's sounding more and more like that. Yeah. So the, the initial request, if it's new or a new product or those things, is, is we're hearing more and more the request is, let's get it on the marketplace first, let's see how it performs, and then let's, let's revisit that conversation. And so, um, yeah, like, like Philip said, I think that the, the advantage here is if it's approached, it could be you just scattershot your products up there and get minimum, by minimum, I mean, one image that's taken at home with an iPhone video and you, uh, iPhone picture, or whatever in the garage, in, in the garage, and then uh, you you just or you just copy whatever you had on Amazon over, and you think that's going to suffice. Uh, the opportunity in that moment, if you get it put on there and put on there in a way that you're getting 95 percent or higher on quality score, that's good news is you get that quantifiable feedback from Walmart. If you do that and then you come back, uh, you've done what they've asked and you've done it really well. That is a great starting launching point for the next stage of that conversation. Yeah, and if I can add that to that as well, if you think about the amount of items that are on Walmart.com today compared to two years ago or six years ago, 10 years ago, it makes a lot of sense from a Omni merchant team standpoint to use Walmart Marketplace as a quick, easy way to test and see if an item is going to be successful. It's not necessarily always based on is this item going to, you know, hit.com and show up and search right away and sales are going to follow because we know there's a lot more that goes into that, but it's an opportunity to kind of be this, this window mm -hmm. into this new assortment and show off what you have from a content standpoint, show off what you're willing to do and invest into Walmart to make this profitable and successful. And for a, a merchant team or, or a, you know, an associate merchant that's working with thousands of items to be able to tell this story of we launched here, we tested on marketplace and we were successful in these three ways. It makes it a lot easier and kind of cuts through the noise of what items do we want one P what items do we want in store? How, how are we going to decide the future digital shelf for our category? And that's very difficult when, when there's so many items out there and so many opportunities. So I agree. I think marketplace is, is Walmart's approach to let's test and learn and see what happens. Um, but I think suppliers oftentimes take that as a negative, mm -hmm. like, oh, how are we supposed to prove it out here instead of, oh, here's our opportunity to stand out amongst a, a huge amount of items, a huge assortment. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And so now the one piece, you know, they, they, you know, it's like you've gotten this request from your buyer and, you know, you're like, OK, I'm, I'm looking at it as an opportunity but I have no idea where to start. Now what? So what are like, what are some of the first steps? Like what should they, they, what are the first steps that they should do to get everything on, on online and what do they need to be, to be successful? Sure. Yeah. So one of the first questions to clarify probably in that ask is, is clarifying, is this going to be a one P product? So is this something that's going to be one P owned by Walmart or is this going to be one P they'll hear probably dropship vendor uh, so 1P DSV, 1P owned are the two ways you're going to have a listing in a 1P relationship with Walmart that will show up on walmart.com. And if it's not one of those elements, uh, then the request is going, clarifying, is this a marketplace seller account that I'm setting up? Am I going to be the 3P supplier uh, selling direct to customer? And so that would be the first question I'd be asking. And so um, not going into, there's a lot of, a lot of things that go into <laughs> yeah. each of those. Um, but if, if we're talking 3P, 
marketplace, then the next step would be setting up, applying and setting up a, a 3P seller account. And that's going to be different. You're going to have a different, you're going to have a, a supplier number that's unique to the marketplace. It's not your vendor number from, from the retail link side or any of those things. It's a different number, different identity, different entity that you're setting up. And then the next steps there from going through the application process, getting your, your items listed into your catalog, um, utilizing ideally WFS, Walmart Fulfillment Services. It's a separate distribution network than the owned side, uh, but it, we highly recommend it. It's a great, efficient delivery network and getting things in there and then optimizing your listings and moving to reviews, advertising, all those things. How long yeah. does it take to see success? Like how long, like, I mean, you know, it, would you give it a year? I mean, obviously that's a loaded question, but um, it's like, how would you, would you like, what would a buyer kind of want like to, you know, like you would go back in like six months and a year. I mean, obviously you're not going to go back in three weeks and have success, you know, cause you got to build up. Yeah. So much depends on defining success. Right. But I think you touched on the definition for that in this case being, what are you bringing back to the buyer? So I'm curious too, Ryan, what you would take is, we have achieved success, so now we are pitching, let's go 1P from Marketplace. Right, great question, um, and a dangerous question. Very dangerous. Um, <laughs> uh, I try not to overpromise, promise under-deliver. So what we say is, you know, for a, the first stage is, let's get you successfully through getting your account. Mm -hmm. And there's some uncontrollables there. There's some things in the, the system that might flag something. We may have to overcome some roadblocks there, but we're going to be walking through that process. Uh, assuming that goes smoothly, then getting the listings into the account, those things. Um, from there, uh, success looks like for us, we're aiming for about a 45-day window from when we get uh, the ability to be in the account, getting listings into the account to get to that 95% quality score. Uh, that's assuming a few things. Assuming we can get some reviews mm -hmm. um, through shoppers that are purchasing and leaving reviews um, and a few other elements. But we're trying to get to the quality score level. So optimizing for the algorithm, we say, is is – um, probably within about 45 days is our target. Uh, then you're doing the optimizing for the human mm -hmm. from that point on. You're trying to identify what are the real key search terms we're after here that is going to produce volume to the listing so that people have an opportunity to click through. And then from there, we're optimizing for click-through rate and conversion. And that's when you get your sales. That's what it looks like. And those, those are, honestly, those are moving targets based on the really based on product category. There's some heavily competitive product categories that impact that. There's some product categories that may not uh, match up with other marketplaces and the expectations, whatnot. So um, I'm going to purposely talk around that answer yeah. because that's, that's <laughs> a lot of variables in there. But um, if we're talking about the initial requirement, let's get more in the catalog and let's get them there with high quality. We're shooting at 45 days unless something in the system that's uncontrollable hits. And then we're pushing through that to try and get in 60 days get it to that top notch of quality. That's cool. Yeah. That's good and, to know. And that def definition of success is so important because you can spend a lot of time targeting the wrong timeline or strategy mm -hmm. just because you're in a different position. So earlier, Ryan, you talked about, you know, you can be this one piece supplier, you can be this three piece supplier, you can also be one P and three P. And so if you're one P and you're kind of following the strategy of, we want to have items on marketplace as well, you know, there's a lot of different reasons for that that probably is a, a time for a different podcast. But even in that situation, the definition of success might just be, I got my items launched. I already have the relationship with Walmart. I already have everything, but I need the items to be launched. I need the content to look good. It's not a sales target. It is, they were launched and now we can win the buy box if our other items, you know, lose the buy box. Or we have a new assortment. We've launched new items. And so we want to, as soon as we're in a line review or as soon as we're discussing something with Walmart, we want to be able to go ahead and showcase what we have. And so I think understanding what place you're in in the beginning and then being able to define this is success, I think that's, that's the starting point for anything. And I think there's a lot, of, a lot of marketplace sellers right now that don't have a good idea of what success would be based on where they're at. And so they're launching and maybe they're disappointed in the return in the 45 days or the 90-day window. And so a lot of times you need that that additional partner that understands Walmart, understands where you're at, understands Amazon as well, so that they can kind of put language to this is where you're at and this is where we need to be in 45, 90 days. Yeah. And, and for someone that has familiarity maybe with the, if they're an e-commerce seller or they're a one piece seller that also has listings on Amazon already, we say that the range we've seen in general, broad generalities, if they're thinking sales targets eventually, we're 
we're seeing anywhere from four to 12% right now of what they might expect to what they see on Amazon marketplace. So to, to help set the expectations of this is still early stages, there's going to be upward trend. Um, but if that's part of their success metric, then we try and set that expectation of that's, that's really the target we're after here. And honestly on Walmart, um, if you look at it from a contribution margin level, not just revenue, because Walmart's fees are actually lower than Amazon. Uh, you can measure, uh, I, I, would, I would encourage suppliers to think in terms of contribution margin per product, not just revenue. Okay, that's a good tip. That was gonna be my, my next question. Like what other kind of tips do you have? What, you know, that's a, that's, a, that's a great one. And uh, I, I wanna just leave it at the last question. Um, you know, I know that uh, sometimes, you know, uh, suppliers can get in there and they be like, this is really overwhelming. I don't have time to add more stuff to my plate. Um, you know, are there third parties out there that, that will just take it off your plate and do it and do it, do it for you? And can you just call somebody up and be like, Walmart wants me to do this. I don't have time to do it. You guys look really good at this, take it. Uh, absolutely. And so that's, that's, thank you for the, uh, that was the, the soft toss it is plug. and going for, for the fence. Like yeah, absolutely. Uh, we are one of them and we would love to talk with any suppliers that are trying to figure this out. Um, the 80, 20 rule is a key one for a lot of people in business and they got to keep a, for a, a one P supplier often they're keeping the business and growing it through these, uh, retail relationships, all these elements. And so, uh, they recognize it's important, but they also recognize when they're budgeting their own internal time. They need to keep the eye on different targets. And so we come alongside and we say, let us take that off your plate. We'll, we'll manage those services on the marketplace side. If, they're, if they've got uh, teams that are already working with them on the retail link side or everything else on that side, we coordinate with them as well to make sure we're doing that well. Uh, so yeah, we would love to talk to them. They can find us on bluerise.com. It's B-L-U-E-R-Y-S-E.com. Or they can email me, Ryan, R-Y-A-N, at bluerise.com. Mm -hmm. Um, they can find our information online. We'd be happy to talk to them. And of, of course, the great team at White Spider and Skew Ninja also provide services and well. And, and so uh, I know there'd be great conversations either way they go there. Yep, I know. Well, yeah. I guess you're like us where you uh, make the eyes wise. I was thinking the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't think there was any, I don't think that was on purpose, but Ryan, without realizing it, tried to be just like us. Yeah. So we, we, we just desperately, we want to be part of the right. family. Yeah. 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 So. Of course, of course, whatever yeah. it takes. Even and make if it's the a, eyes a the wise. That's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One thing I might add to what, what Ryan mm -hmm. just talked about too is there, there are probably a lot of people out there right now from the discussions we've had that are asking you know, why and should we, and is it worth it? Or maybe they're on the side of they launched six months ago and it's not, they're not hitting what they expected. And so there's disappointment, there's confusion. Is this worth our time? And I think, I think the opportunity of what walmart.com and Walmart marketplace not only is today, but what it will be as Walmart has already and is continuing to invest and try to grow this platform significantly. I think Earlier, Ryan, you talked about, you know, get in while you can, and, and this is the opportunity to do that today. There is so much opportunity, and I like to, I like to think about it from a, <clears throat> from a past standpoint. So Teddy Roosevelt was famous for saying a lot of different things, and there was one thing that he said that, that always stood out to me, and I think it applies well here. Somebody asked him, you know, it seems like you're a great, a great shot. You know, he, he was in the military, and he hunted a lot, and and he said, you know, are you, are you as good of a shot as everyone says? And he said, no, no, not at all, but I shoot a lot. And I think what Walmart Marketplace is today is it's your opportunity to shoot a lot, right? It's your opportunity to grow your assortment from, you know, being successful on Amazon or 1P. It's your opportunity to expand and grow. And then as Walmart continues to grow as well, you're growing with them. You're in the middle of what they're doing. And so if, if you're questioning today whether or not you should be 3P or Marketplace, that probably means you just don't have a, a partner that, that's helping you with it today, like Blue Rise, like White Spider. So take the time to, to do your due diligence and invest in personnel and partners so that you can land and be successful on there today, um, not only for today, but for the future as well. That's fantastic. The, um, one more illustration that I used, it's, uh, I've heard, I don't know who said it, so I'm, I'm not as good of a big of a that's scholar okay. as you. That's Philip. okay. Shake it off. <laughs> Uh, the question, when's the best time to plant a tree? Mm. Well, 15 years ago. Yeah. Uh, when's the next best time is right now. Yeah. And so uh, get moving now because over time it is going to grow. And so that's what we think Walmart is, what we know it will be. Uh, they've proven that over and over again when they put their, yeah. put something behind, uh, put their weight behind something to get it moving and it is moving. So, yeah. 
Good. Time to go out and plant some trees. Let's go plant some trees. Yeah. No, that that was that was really great. Thank you all for being here. And oh, that was that was awesome. Yeah. And Ryan, Ryan got the ender, but the, your ender was almost lore worthy. We, oh, we we've been having so a competition close. today on who's got the best ending. But I think, I think the Ryan, tree Ryan was got brilliant. it. Brilliant. Sorry, I didn't mean to steal any thunder there. No, no, that was Ryan brilliant. is getting the hammer next week. Yeah, Although I, need, I do need to look that up because I think that's a great quote to pull out cool. when you can. Yeah, it, you know, it helps to know who it is. It sounds like George Washington, but I don't want to just throw that out there. But, <laughs> no, it's too know, late. Uh, he planted it and then chopped it down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, according so, to fable. A good yeah. quote by George Washington. Um, <laughs> Who planted right. this tree 15 years ago? I'm yeah. chopping it down. I'm chopping it down. And I'm planting a new one. All right. <laughs> Bye, guys. Thank you very much. Thanks, sir.